In this presentation, I'll be talking about epistemologies again. This one is about constructionism, and I'm drawing on the work of Michael Crotty from his book, The Foundations of Social Research, Meaning and Perspective in the Research Process. That's published by SAGE. It's really worth a look. The idea behind constructionism is that the world only has meaning when consciousness engages with it. So the world and the objects within it are there, but they don't have meaning. They've not been interpreted. So individual conscious engages with the world and gives meaning to it. So the object and the conscious are partners in creating meaning. So the object and the subject are brought together in one in the process of constructionism. Now you may come across constructionism and constructivism. Now these are not clearly separated, but Crotty takes constructivism to be the individualistic understanding, and that is the sense-making of the individual mind, that the objective truth is actually a matter of the individual's perspective. Constructionism is the shared understandings and the meaning, that's the collective generation of meaning shaped by language and culture. So from this perspective, constructivism is a unique process. Constructivism is perhaps more difficult to critique because it's up to the individual. In contrast, constructionism fosters the critical spirit because you're always looking for the truth within the collective. We interpret the world through our consciousness. Intentionality describes the process of your conscious reaching out and into something. Intentional comes from the Latin tendre, or to tend, or to direct oneself. So through intentionality, consciousness shapes the object. Again, it's that interaction between subject and object. Objects cannot be described in isolation from the conscious experiencing of them, nor can the conscious experience be isolated from the object. These are a lot of complicated words, so I, I like this example that um, is given in the book. Here we see a poem. It's taken uh, from the work of Stanley Fish. So if you look at it, maybe you can see things in that poem. Now, Fish told the, the class, well, this is a poem and you interpret it. And, uh, and as you're looking at it, some of you might have started to try and interpret it as a poem. But then if I was to tell you, actually, it's not a poem, it's a list. And then you start to look at it differently because your consciousness is interpreting it. So you might have tried to make it into a poem in your head and now you're making it into a list. But actually, even for you to see it as a list, you must have a conscious knowledge of what a list is. Hierarchy, uh, seriality, these sorts of things. So your mind, your consciousness is, is shaped already and you look at things and you interpret things and you place meaning upon things, often based on other information you're given. Constructionism is this subject-object interplay, but it's not some form of abstract dream or fabrication. So the researcher may can be considered as this bricoleur this is the idea of self-reflexivity and again what that means is to reflect upon your own process of construction of composition and engage with what is not yourself to see objects possibilities we've all been given uh, ideas and concepts of what things are and conventions but can you look past conventional meanings to reinterpret objects and processes and things in the world so constructionism is not subjectivism. It's, it's not that there's no external truth, but rather it's a focus on the content, on your conscious engagement with objects, with things, uh, and the way you interpret them. And can you look past your given known understandings and see new things? 
Culture directs our interpretation. So meaningful reality is socially constructed. Social here is about the way meaning is generated. Now culture directs behaviour and gives meaning to your experience. It also, of course, leads us to ignore things. So we think about issues of feminism, racism, things in society that were often very much perspective based and overlooked by certain demographics. Giddens proposes a double hermeneutic. Hermeneutic is the interpretation of text for meaning. And in this, we have a double hermeneutic, a challenge of social science. First, you have to grasp the frame of meaning employed by the actors. Say, if you're interviewing people, what do they mean? And then you have to reconstitute the meaning that they give into your analytical framework, the, the concepts that you wish to explore. So you have to do first the interpretation. What does my what does my interviewee, for instance, mean? And then second, what does that mean in the framing that I'm using? Now, Patricia Benner suggests that objectivity and validity of understanding lies in those common meanings. So as people commonly interpret them, therefore, that is the valid and correct meaning to put on it. Karl Marx proposed that those who own the means of production have used their power to determine culture and therefore meaning. And therefore, we need to strongly challenge the common meanings because they've been dictated to us by people in positions of power. Mead proposes pragmatism, where understanding thoughts and values are through the highest logical, ethical and aesthetic community attitudes, very much looking for the best in people. However, critical theorists would see the world as some form of battle battleground between the interests of those powerful groups who have dominance and dictate meaning and they're dominant over those with less or even no power, with less ability to influence meaning. So let's look at a spinning chair. The chair exists as an object with or without our conscious awareness of it, but it only exists as a chair if you view it as such. And we, we may, may add all sorts of meaning on to this particular scene, but it is ultimately just some pixels rotating.